Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the 25th of the first month on our Creator's calendar. Tomorrow would be first fruits, as we reckon it, the 26th. It would be the same day that in the evening, all 12 were gathered with him, including Toma or Thomas. And he appeared to the 12 and allowed him to touch him after the eight days from the Sabbath that he arose on so that he would uh, have already appeared to his father and was able to be handled. But it is also the 8th of Sep uh, the eighth of March, I'm sorry, April, good night, on the Gregorian calendar, I'm sorry for that, for 2023. <clears throat> and last week we started covering this topic, we read it, uh, we went through this about four months ago, but we're going over it again for some new people and to, to refresh it, because it's always... It's always good to go over these things until it's ingrained in you, especially when it's edifying or beneficial. This particular version of the two ways or the two Ruach Oath that have rule over every man is found in the Apostolic Constitutions, Book 7, starting in Section 1, and I believe it goes through Section 5. Or that could be the heresies, I'm sorry, but we'll, we'll see where it gets to. However, this one is very well put together. And the reason why it's one of my favorites is because it's literally going throughout the, the scriptures that's common to us all and bringing it to life, this, this theme, throughout the entirety of his word. So if you're any, what, anywhere familiar with the, the Bible, as we call it in America, or colloquially in the world today, then this will be very edifying. This is on the two ways, the way of life and the way of death. The lawgiver Moshe said to the Yisraeli, Behold, I have set before your face the way of life and the way of death, and added, Choose life that you may live. And that was from Deuteronomy, right? Eliyahu, I'm sorry for the spelling here. When I was still learning, and I am still learning even today, but when I was still learning the language and I was getting more familiar with it, I was very literal. Aleph is an A. Lamed is an L. Yod is a Y or I. As you can see, it will do the phonetic for an I and dip, you know, double for the Y afterward. You find doubling in quite a few letters in quite a few Hebrew words, and it, it's even carried into English today, but so it's for a different time. The point is, I was very literal, and sometimes I would spell things a little awkward, but I put it elsewhere as I was growing. Now I know that the E sound was connected with the Aleph letter. Pretty much a, the A and E vowel sounds were connected to it through usage. But again, that's also for another time. I just wanted to explain why there's an A for Eliyahu here. I'm, I'm sorry for that. <clears throat> the reason why we put an A for Elohim, though, is because that's literally what it's supposed to be. If you look at any Hebrew grammar that's worth its salt. It'll tell you that all the half vowel, all the half vowels, both the regular schwa and then the hatu pathak, hatu sigal, hatu um, comets, and all the half vowels, they make the same sound. The a as in about. So this, on occasion, is. Or if when you just have it, the full spelling, it's Elohim, like an A is in about. When you have Aleph, Lamed, Wah, He, it can be an A phonetic, Eloa, or an E, Eloa. It, it's literally both. You have the vowels for both in the scriptures. The reason why it changes is the same way whenever you add vowels or suffixes and prefixes, the phonetics of the vowels will change. That's a normal phenomenon of the Hebrew language. It's just how it works. And it's even how it works in English. You have na nation and national. And that's just one example of there's more that can be said. But long story short, there's reasons why I have certain things spelled certain ways. And sometimes it was still ungrowing and it was in, in, in error. And sometimes it's, it's corrected from error, like Elohim. But it says, Eliyahu, the foreteller, also said to the people... How long would you halt with both your legs? 
If Yahuwah be Elohim, follow him. 1 Kings 18.21 Yahuwah Yahushua also said righteously, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You are not able to serve Elohim and Mammon, right? Matith Yahu 6.24 we also following our teacher, Mashiach. And if you remember what Mashiach means, we, we've shared it before. There was a, I have whiteboards I used to draw the Hebrew letters on and break it down for every meaning that could possibly be derived from the letters and put it into, you know, make pictures sometimes or I'd write the definitions just so I can visually see the full meaning of the name because the Hebrew language is very, all of creation came to be through it. So it's literally how reality works. And if you can know what the meaning of a word is, you get the sense of how it functions literally or in reality. And the word Mashiach is very interesting. We broke that down before, but it's literally the place of the means of, which is Mem. And then Shiach is to muse or meditate, discourse, conversation. So it's the means of discoursing. It's the place of meditation. It's also the means of the gift or present embodied. It's all of these things. It's also the touchable, fillable, right? Mesh, mush mush means touchable and fillable or like uh, mushy in English, but it's the touchable, fillable communication. There's a lot more to it, but that's that's Mashiach, not just the anointed one, but the means through, of discourse, the touchable, fillable communication, like the word made flesh, right? It, it all has that inherent meaning just in the word Mashiach, which is why I use it instead of Christ or Messiah or anything else because of the, the meaning in it. But it says, we also following our teacher Mashiach, who is the deliverer of all men especially of those that believe, 1 Timothy 4.10, are obliged to say that there are two ways, the one of life, the other of death, which have no comparison one with another. For they are very different, or rather entirely separate, and the way of life is that of nature. But that of death was afterwards introduced, it not being according to the mind of El, but from the snares of Hashatan, the adversary. Now, the way of life is that of nature. In the Declaration of Independence, it says we, or it talks about nature's El, or the laws of nature and nature's El, which are synonymous with one another because he is the maker of nature. And it, what is established is his law for how creation works. But that, that is the essence of the common law. And you can see even 2,000 years ago, the way of life is that of nature in perfect agreement with what the common law represents. It says, the first way, therefore, is that of life. And this is, or sorry, and is this, which the Torah or law instructions also does a point and every word in hebrew if you look at it has more meaning i don't want to do that for every single one I, but for like this one it's the covenant tau of light or made evident or revealed ah it's the man established from the beginning but the last work of his hands with the truth seen together right there's a lot i mean everything that these words mean it's always true it, it's always literally how it functions and if you know what these things are it's easier to see that and it's amazing but it's like the the hebrew language is the building blocks for life what he spoke in the hebrew language or yahudith is what scripture calls it is what happened in, in functions in reality and that's why when adam named the animals what he called them is what they were because he literally just called them as they are in the language. 
but back on point there there's so much there the more you learn it the the easier it is to be absolutely sold on the validity and truth of his word so i highly recommend everyone as they're able to to learn it the hebrew language if they can as they can rather but it says the first way therefore is that of life and is this which the torah also does a point to love Yahuwah Elohim with all your mind and with all your soul, who is the one and only El, besides whom there is no other, and your neighbor as yourself. And whatsoever you would not should be done to you, do not to another. Which is a reference to Luke 10, 26 through 28, and is previously mentioned in Tobit, or what they call Tobi Yahu. Chapter 4, verse 15. Barak them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Matthew Yahoo 544. Love your enemies. For what thanks is it if you love those that love you? For even the nations do the same. Luke 632, Matthew Yahoo 545 or 46 through 47. But love those that hate you, and you shall have no enemy. For, says he, you shall not hate any man. No, not the, Mitzrayim, not the Mitzrayim, or Egyptian, nor an Edomite. For they are all the workmanship of Elohim. Avoid not the persons, but the sentiments of the wicked. So, don't hate the ones that enslaved you and don't hate your brother who rose up against you and see seeks your demise. Right? Abstain from fleshly and worldly lusts. If anyone gives you a stroke on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Not that revenge is evil, but that patience is more honorable. For Dawid says, if I have made returns to them that repaid me evil, which is in Psalms, I believe it's in the uh, 50s, if I remember correctly. If anyone compels you to go one mile, go with him too. And he that will sue you at the law and take away your coat, let him have your cloak also. And from him that takes your goods, require them not again. Matith Yahoo 540. And Luke 6, 29 and 30. Give to him that asks you, and from him that would borrow of you, do not shut your hand. Matith Yahoo 542. For the righteous man is pitiful and lends. Psalm 37, 21 and 26. For your father would have you give to all who himself makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. He sends his reign on the righteous and on the unrighteous. Matith Yahoo 545. And here's an example. It mentions in the Shepherd of Hermas and in the Epistle of Barnabas that we are to give without questioning the motives of the person we're giving to. If they ask for it, if they say they're in need and you're able to do so, do it with a willing and joyful heart, because our Creator, Yahuwah Yahushua, right, and the Father through Him, gives to everyone, good or evil, beneficently. And He makes His reign right, fall on the righteous and the wicked. He treats them both well, and we're to do the same in, in, in His likeness and image. It sets the highest bar for righteous, pious living. And anyone that could obtain to that is going to have an expectation of unspeakable good. Because you're literally the image of your maker. It says, it is therefore reasonable to give to all out of your own labors. For, says he, honor Yahuwah out of your righteous labors, but so that the set-apart ones be preferred. You shall not kill that is, you shall not destroy a man like yourself, for you dissolve what was well made, not as if all killing were wicked, but only that of the innocent. But the killing which is righteous is reserved to the magistrates alone. 
you shall not commit adultery, for you divide one flesh into two. They too shall be one flesh, Bereshit 2.24. For the husband and wife are one in nature, in consent, in union, in disposition, and the conduct of life. But they are separated in sex and number. You shall not corrupt boys. Waikra 18.22 For this wickedness is contrary to nature, and arose from Sodom, which was therefore entirely consumed with fire sent from Elohim. Bereshit, or Genesis 19. Let such a one be accursed, and all the people shall say Amen, which means so be it. Deuteronomy 27. You shall not fornicate, or you shall not commit fornication. For, says he, there shall not be a fornicator among the children of Yisrael. Deuteronomy 23, 17. You shall not steal for Achan, or Achan, when he had stolen in Yisrael at Yericho, or Yericho, was stoned to death. Yahushua chapter 7. And Gehazi, who stole and told a lie, inherited the leprosy of Naaman, 2 Kings chapter 5. And Yahuda, who stole the poor's money, betrayed Yahuwah of esteem to the Yahudim, Yahuchanan 12.6. And repented and hanged himself, and burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out, Matith Yahu 25.7. Acts 1, verse 18. And Hanan Yahu and Sapphira, his wife, who stole their own goods and tempted the Ruach of Yahuwah, were immediately, at the sentence of Kepha, our fellow sent one, struck dead. Acts chapter 5. You shall not use magic. You shall not use witchcraft. For, he says, you shall not suffer a witch to live. Now, for those that are not quite familiar with the distinction in usage, magic is the power, uh, the false gifts of the Ruach, if you will, from Satan, and it's demonic beings doing your bidding. What we call telekinesis, clairvoyance, clairaudience, um, having uh, phantoms and imaginable, you know, doing magic that does not involve rituals. When you use witchcraft, you're going to have rituals, incantations, and spells where you're doing the same thing, but they have a pretext for a form you follow for more power or a specific result. All of it's based off of lies. It's just the instigation of demons following Satan's will to delude people and keep them in evil, and eventually joining them in the lake of fire. But there is a difference in its usage. John Todd, a survivor, or he's he was a martyr, but... He came out of witchcraft. He was in the Illuminati. He was a high druid in the in the rank of the 13 that helped rule over America. He became a believer, left that, and went around exposing it in the late or in the mid 70s and early 80s. And he was eventually, uh, well, you can look into it, but he was falsely imprisoned and eventually killed. The things that he made known about how magic works, though, is the same things you can find corroborated in books that are over 2,000 years old, like the Recognitions of Clement, the Common Scriptures, the Book of Yobelin, or Jubilees, if you will, and things of that nature. <clears> this <throat> says, you shall not use magic, you shall not use witchcraft, for, he says, you shall not suffer a witch to live. You shall not slay your child by causing abortion, nor kill that which is begotten. For everything that is shaped and has received a nephesh or inner being from Elohim, if it be slain, shall be avenged, as being unrighteously destroyed. You shall not covet the things that belong to your neighbor, as his wife or his servant or his ox or his field. You shall not forswear yourself. 
For it is said, you shall not swear at all, Matthew 5, 34. But if that cannot be avoided, you shall swear truly, for everyone that swears by him shall be commended, Psalm 63, 11. And this is why our founders in America made it a requirement to swear an oath to be a public servant, that you would abide by the Constitution, so help you L because they knew that an oath was binding and forever and very, very serious. And if you broke your oath, you have no expectation of eternal well-being, which should literally terrify um, a great deal of those in public service today, both in regular elected capacities and then police officers and military. Everyone who swears to uphold, support, and defend the Constitution that is in violation of it, you have to repent. <clears throat> says, you shall not bear false witness, for he that falsely accuses the needy provokes to anger him that made him. Mishli or Proverbs 14.31. You shall not speak evil, for, says he, love not to speak evil, lest you be taken away. And... If you haven't realized it by now, the words that you say have an effect on reality, everything around you, the living and the non-material, the non-living things. Men were given dominion, and as you reckon in your life, he causes it to be. So it is, it, that's why he tells you to let your words be for the uplifting and edification of others. Let it be seasoned with salt. He, there's nowhere in those scriptures that doesn't tell you to be anything but circumspect, circumspect and careful about what you choose to say. Science has now confirmed these things or given us cooperation. I believe it was first attributed to a Japanese scientist who had put uh, two plants in a control group or three plants in a control group. He would speak uplifting one's words to one. He would speak evil to another, and he just left the other one alone. And you see that the one that he spoke well to was fruitful and, and flourishing. The one he spoke evil to was dying or dead, and the one that he just left alone was, was rotting. So it literally had an effect. Other people since that time have also done the experiment and found it to be true. And the, you know, if you do that for yourself, it'd be another witness. But the intent there is that what comes out of you, let it be for the benefit of others. And, and it's actually the benefit of you as well. That's right. Our tongue and mouth fill us with good. Life and death are in the power of the tongue and the one loving it eats the fruit thereof. It's literally all over scripture. And again, the uh, Eagle's Wings Ministries, the lady that goes, that she's a doctor that goes over how 87 to 95% of all disease, it has to do with sinful thoughts, words, and actions, and how it corresponds into health problems for the individual. Repenting of those things literally brings health to your body. This is, nor shall you be mindful of injuries, for the ways of those that remember injuries are unto death. You shall not be double-minded, nor double-tongued, for a man's own lips are a strong snare to him, Proverbs 6.2. And a talkative man shall not be prospered upon earth. Your words shall not be vain, for you shall give an account of every idle word. Matith Yahoo 12.36, and Waikra or Leviticus 19.11. You shall not tell lies. For, says he, you shall destroy all those that speak lies. You shall not be covetous nor rapacious. For, says he, woe to him that is covetous towards his neighbor with an evil covetedness. Habakkuk 2.9. You shall not be an hypocrite, lest your portion be with them. You shall not be ill-natured nor proud, for Elohim resists the proud. You shall not accept persons in right ruling, for the right ruling is Yahuwah's. 
You shall not hate any man. You shall surely reprove your brother and not become guilty on his account. And reprove a wise man and he will love you. One of those is in, or the former was in Waikra or Leviticus. And the latter verse here is in Proverbs. Eshoo or cast away from you all evil and all that is like it. For says he, abstain from unrighteousness and trembling shall not come near you. Be not soon angry, nor spiteful, nor passionate, nor furious, nor daring, lest you undergo the fate of Cain, and of Shaul, and of Yahuab. Shaul, or this is Cain, the brother of Avel, Avel right, Abel. Shaul, the first king of the twelve tribes, and Yahuab, or Yoab as they call him, but Yahuab was the general of the armies when Dawid was sovereign. It says, For the first of these slew his brother Havel, because Havel was found to be preferred before him with Elohim, and because Havel's offering was preferred. The second persecuted Kadoshi, or set apart Dawid, who had slain Goliath the Philistine, being envious of the praises of the women who danced. The third slew two generals of armies, Abner of Yisrael and Amasa of Yahuda. Be not a diviner, for that leads to idolatry. For, says Shemuel, divination is sin. First Shemuel 15.23 there shall be no divination in Jacob, nor soothsaying in Yisrael. Numbers 23, 23. You shall not use enchantments or purgations for your child. You shall not be a soothsayer, nor a diviner by great or little birds. Nor shall you learn wicked arts. For these things has the Torah or law forbidden. Be not one that desires for evil, for you will be led into intolerable sins. You shall not speak obscenely, nor use wanton glances, nor be a drunkard, for from such causes arise whoredoms and adulteries. Be not a lover of money, lest you serve mammon instead of Elohim. Matith Yahu 6.24 be not vainglorious, nor haughty, nor high-minded, for from all these things arrogance does spring. Remember him who said, Yahuwah, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. I have not exercised myself in great matters, nor in things too high for me, but I was humble. Be not a murmurer, remembering the punishment of those underwent who murmured against Moshe. Be not self-willed, be not malicious, be not hard-hearted, but be not passionate, be not mean-spirited. For all these things lead to blasphemy, but be meek as were Moshe and Dawid, since the meek shall inherit the earth. Psalm 37, 11. Matith Yahu 5.5 5. Be slow to wrath, for such a one is very prudent, or chakam, wise, since he that is hasty of spirit is a very fool. Be chesedi, or merciful, for prosperous or happy are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And every man gets according to his deserts. As you do, so it will be done unto you. You want mercy from on high, you have to show it to other men, especially when you've been wronged and affronted. Because we've wronged and affronted our maker, we have to be that way to receive it. And we have ample opportunity in our lives, depending on how much we've actually messed up. A perfect example is the emissaries. Every one of them denied the truth 
and they had to suffer the consequences and all, quite often they were martyred for it. Shaul is a great example. What he did to believers before he came to the truth and then what he suffered afterward were directly correlated with one another. And he with joy, without grumbling or complaining, took the things that happened to him with a cheerful disposition and still went for the benefit of others with what he said and did. So it says, be sincere, quiet, good, trembling at the word of Elohim. Yeshayahu 66.2 You shall not exalt yourself as did the Pharisee. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased. Luke 18.14 And that which is of high esteem with man is abomination with Elohim. Luke 16.15 you shall not entertain confidence in your inner being, for a confident man shall fall into mischief. This should be self-confidence, okay? You shall not go, or yeah, you shall not go along with the foolish, but with the prudent and righteous. For he that walks with the prudent or wise shall be wise, but he that walks with the foolish shall be known. Proverbs 13, 20. Receive the afflictions that fall upon you with an even mind, and the chances of life without overmuch sorrow, knowing that a reward shall be given to you by Elohim, as was given to Job and to Eleazar, or Lazarus. And here you can see it a little clearer. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but Eleazar... The Hebrew language intermixed with the language of the sons of Yepheth called Yawin, and that became what we know as the Greek language. One of, uh, quite a few of the words are directly from the Hebrew. One of the things it would do is it would aspirate the Alephs sometimes when it was at the beginning, like you have an Eber becomes Hebrew, and other times it would drop the Aleph altogether, in which case you have right here. They would drop the Aleph here and they would add the us suffix for a, ma a, a masculine suffix for the end and you have Lazarus and that's how you get Lazarus from Elazar. There's many other words electron is El Qatar is to spark there's a lot more to that as well. There's a book in the 1800s that was written there's a few books that were written one covers the fact that the Celtic or Gaelic language of the Highlands of Scotland was originally Hebrew. And then another is about that particular dialect or that language's influence on ancient Greek and then on ancient Latin. And I, they're very well put together. It's literally just a list of words and the meanings of names and how they, they would have carried over from the Hebrew and intermixed as they traveled. And that is actually a secondary witness to the ancient history of Caledonia which mentions that the survivors of Troy eventually went to, to Scotland and they brought from Greece their people and the language would have been carried over with them. And the ancient history of the British monarchs, for, which was a Welsh writing from Brutus to Codwaller, Brutus being the, the grandson of Aeneas, who was a paganized survivor of Troy that went to Italy. So you can find the evidence of these facts in history of where the Hebrews were migrating to also corresponding in the languages that were there and how they kind of mixed together. Uh, for anyone that needs that evidence, it's, it's pretty spectacular. And then you can start getting a, a firmer grasp on history and how it's supposed to be comprehended, at least in this, in this capacity. This is, you shall honor him that speaks to you the word of Elohim and be mindful of him day and night. And you shall fear him or reverence him not as the author of your birth but as one that is made the occasion of your well-being for where the doctrine concerning elohim is there elohim is present or where our mishiach said where two or more are gathered in my name there i am with them right he is the word he is the truth so when you gather in truth with his word he is with you here's another witness to that you shall every day seek the face of the Kodeshim, or set-apart ones, that you may acquiesce in their words. 
you shall not make schisms among the Kodeshim, but be mindful of the followers of Korach. If you're not familiar, Korach is one of the sons of Louis, who with 250 others and some of the leaders of the 12 tribes went and brought forth incense to try to see who would be approved to be serving in the Kohen of our creator. And because they were contentious against Moshe and Aharon, and they were fighting against the truth there, they were consumed in the fire that they brought to offer an incense. The 250 incense holders that were melted when they were consumed by fire were used as a covering for the ark that was put over it as a warning for the people not to act that way anymore. And that can be read in the book of Numbers. It happens after they are rejected from entering into the promised land for disobedience. It says, you shall make shalom between those that were or that are at variance, as Moshe did when he persuaded them to be friends. You shall rightly rule righteously, for the right ruling is Yahuwah's. You shall not accept persons when you reprove for sins. But do as Eliyahu and Mikhayahu did to Ahab, and Abimelech the Ethiopian to Zadik Yahu, and Nathan to Dawid, and Yahukanon to Herod. Now, you, I'm sure you, you know about Eliyahu. He's the one that re, caused it not to rain for three and a half years, and he contested with the priests of Baal on the mountain where 450 of them went in a circle and prayed to have fire come down and consume their offering most of the day. And Eliyahu by himself prayed to have the offering consumed for Yahuwah. And then it was proven by fire who was the real Elohim. Mikhayahu was the one that reproved him who he hated. And when they were going out to battle with Yahu Shaphat, Yahu Shaphat and uh, I think it was the kings of Edom, but he went with Ahab to go fight, and he had asked for a foreteller of Yahuwah to, to give them good news about it. And when they brought Mikhayahu, he had told them that uh, Ahab was going to die. And so he, he hated him, or he didn't approve of his speaking to him because he would speak contrary to what he wanted, but he did speak the truth. I'm having difficulty remembering this incident right at the moment, but Nathan to Dawid was when he had, when Dawid had sinned against uh, Yahuwah with Bathsheba and killed Oriyahu, right? And then Yahuwah on the immerser when he reproved Herod, not Herod the Great, but his son, also named Herod, for taking his, his brother's wife in marriage when he was still alive. He was committing adultery. This is, be not of a doubtful mind in your prayer, whether it shall be granted or no. For Yahuwah said to me, Kepha, upon the sea, you of little belief, whereof did you doubt? Matith Yahu 14.31 Be not ready to stretch out your hand to receive, and to shut it when you should give. Sirach ben Yahushua 4.31 if you have by the works of your hands, give, that you may labor for the redemption of your sins. For by alms and acts of steadfast fidelity, sins are purged away. Proverbs 16.6, 6, Daniel 4.27 You shall not grudge to give to the poor, nor when you have given shall you murmur. For you shall know who will repay you your reward. For, says he, he that has mercy on the poor man lends to Yahuwah according to his gift, so shall it be repaid him again. Proverbs 19.17 You shall not turn away from him that is needy. For, says he, he that stops his ears that he may not hear the cry of the needy, himself also shall call, and there shall be none to hear him. Proverbs 21, 13. 
You shall communicate in all things to your brother, and shall not say your goods are your own. For the common participation of the necessaries of life is appointed to all men by Elohim. And the list of the things necessary for life are literally enumerated in Sirach. It might be elsewhere as well, but I know it goes through that. Food, clothing, iron, salt, oil. There's a few things. There's a list of things that shouldn't be denied someone in need, right? And really, if you have it and someone asks, as our Mashiach had mentioned, you should give it to them as knowing that you will be requited in both of them either in this life or in the age to come. You shall not take off your hand from your son or from your daughter, but shall teach them the fear of Elohim from their youth. For, says he, correct your son, so shall he afford you good expectation. Proverbs 19.18 you shall not command your manservant or your maidservant who trust in the same Elohim with bitterness of inner being, lest they groan against you and wrath be upon you from Elohim. And you servants, be subject to your masters, Ephesians 6, 5, as to the representatives of Elohim with attention and fear, as to Yahuwah and not to men. Ephesians 6, 7. You shall hate all hypocrisy, and whatever is pleasing to Yahuwah, that shall you do. By no means forsake the commands of Yahuwah, but you shall observe what things you have received from him, neither adding to them nor taking away from them. For you shall not add unto his words, lest he convict you and you become a liar. Proverbs 36. You shall confess your sins unto Yahuwah, your Elohim, and you shall not add unto them, that it may be well with you from Yahuwah, your Elohim, who desires not the death of a sinner, but his repentance. And that's alluding to what you can find in Yechezkiel or Ezekiel and pretty much all over scripture. You shall be observant to your father and mother as the causes of your being born, that you may live long on the earth which Yahuwah your Elohim gives you. Do not overlook your brethren or your kinsfolk, for you shall not overlook those nearly related to you. Yes, Yahu 58, 7. You shall fear the king, knowing that his appointment is of Yahuwah. His rulers you shall honor as the ministers of Elohim, for they are the revengers of all unrighteousness, to whom pay taxes, tribute, and every oblation with a willing mind. You shall not proceed to your prayer in the day of your wickedness, before you have laid aside your bitterness. This is the way of life in which may you be found through Yahushua Mashiach, our Yahuwah. And now it's going to go into the way of death, which is a little, quite a bit shorter, but we'll read it too. It says, <clears throat> Yet the way of death is known by its wicked practices, for therein is the ignorance of Elohim, and the introduction of many evils and disorders, and disturbances, whereby come murders, adulteries, fornications, perjuries, unlawful lusts, thefts, idolatries, magic arts, witchcrafts, rapines, false witnesses, hypocrisies, double-heartedness, deceit, pride, malice, insolence, covetedness, obscene talk, jealousy, confidence, haughtiness, arrogance, impudence, persecution of the good, enmity to truth, 
love of lies, ignorance of righteousness. For they who do such things do not adhere to goodness or to righteous right ruling. They watch not for good, but for evil, from whom meekness and patience are far off, who love vain things, pursuing after reward, having no pity on the poor, not laboring for him who is in misery, nor knowing him that made them, murderers of infants, destroyers of the workmanship of Elohim, that turn away from the needy, adding affliction to the afflicted, the flatterers of the rich, the despisers of the poor, full of sin. May you children be delivered from all these. See that no one seduce you from piety, for, says he, you may not turn aside to it, or from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have comprehension in all that you do. For if you do not turn out of the right way, you will not be unrighteous. And conversely, if you don't, if you're not unrighteous, you, you'll have him always with you, who is comprehension. Hence, you will have comprehension in all that you do. Shalom again, everyone. This is a different post. It had um, a few of the other writings about the two ways of the two ruachot, or spirits that rule over every man. And as you can see here, I had mentioned it. They had the apostolic constitutions, what's called the Didache or the Didache. It's the teaching of the Twelve, the recognitions of Clement, the testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs. It has a little bit in Yahuda. I believe it talks about it as somewhat in the Testament of Asher, in the Testament of Louis, and possibly the others. It was a major theme that we have also in the visions of Amram, as we already read with the Apostolic Constitutions, and that one is almost identical to the one that's in the Epistle of Barnabas. Aside from those, we also have what we're going to read right here from the recognitions, or sorry, from the Shepherd of Hermas, which is uh, three books that were written, that were put together by a gentleman who was an overseer in Rome. Who was living before and during the times of those, the heavy persecutions that happened before the... Uh, before and during the times of Vespasian and his children, Titus and Domitian. So this is from book two, or called the, the Commands, and this is specifically starting on command number six. For anyone that's not familiar, I call the Shepherd of Hermas the plank remover, because if you read them with an intention of, of self-reflection, it does an absolutely wonderful job of removing the plank out of your eye to correct whatever you might be in fault at because it's very, very in-depth on those things. It helps show why things happen in a man's house and what happens with his family, just like a king with a kingdom and how that functions as a man over his own house. And if you want to know why problems happen in your life, it's a great thing to read. Although I... I you know, would caution anyone if you don't have a serious mind to reform bad behaviors, I would stay away from it because then you're just incurring judgment for yourself. <clears throat> but it says, I command you, said he, in my first commandments, that you should keep amuna or belief. That this word in Hebrew, amuna, is where we get trust and trustworthiness, belief, and steadfast fidelity or faith and faithfulness. It's the same word for both. But that you should keep amuna and reverence or fear and repentance. Yes, master, said I. He continued, but now I will show you the virtues of these commands, that you may know their effects, how they are prescribed alike to the righteous and unrighteous. Do you, therefore, believe the righteous 
But give no credit to the unrighteous, for righteousness keeps the right way, but unrighteousness the wicked way. Do you therefore keep the right way, and leave that which is evil? For the evil way has not a good end, but has many stumbling blocks. It is rugged and full of thorns, and leads to destruction. And it is hurtful to all such as walk in it. But they who go in the right way walk with evenness and without offense, because it is not rough nor thorny. You see, therefore, how it is best to walk in this way. You shall therefore go, says he, and all others, as many as believe in Eloah with all their heart, shall go through it. And now, says he, comprehend first of all what belongs to Amuna or belief. There are two messengers with man, one of righteousness, the other of inequity. And this messenger of righteousness is our Mashiach, and the messenger of inequity is the devil or Satan. And I said unto him, Master, how shall I know that there are two such messengers with man? Here says he, and comprehend. The messenger of righteousness is mild and modest, and gentle and quiet. When therefore he gets into your heart, immediately he talks with you of righteousness, of modesty, of chastity, of bountifulness, of forgiveness, of charity, of kodeshah, or set-apartness. When all these things come into your heart, know then that the messenger of righteousness is with you. Wherefore, hearken to this messenger and to his works. Learn also the works of the messenger of inequity. He is first of all bitter and angry and foolish, and his works are pernicious and overthrow the servants of Eloah. When therefore these things come into your heart, you shall know by his works that this is the messenger of inequity. And I said unto him, Master, how shall I comprehend these things? Here says he, and comprehend. All right, sorry about that. We're going to start again at the top of 12. And I said unto him, Master, how shall I comprehend these things? Here says he, and comprehend. When anger overtakes you, or bitterness, know that he is in you, as also when the desire of many things, and of the best meats and of drunkenness, and when the love of what belongs to others, pride, and much speaking and ambition, and the like things come upon you. When, therefore, these things arise in your heart, Know that the messenger of inequity is with you. Seeing, therefore, you know his works, depart from them all, and give no credit to him, because his works are evil, and become not the servants of Elohim. Here, therefore, you have the works of both these messengers. Comprehend now and believe the messenger of righteousness, because his instruction is good. For let a man never, or be never so happy, yet if the thoughts of the other messenger arise in his heart, that man or woman must needs sin. But let a man or woman never be, or be never so wicked, rather, if the works of the messenger of righteousness come into his heart, that man or woman must needs do some good. Now, for the record, this is saying, don't be so happy that you think if this if a sin comes into your mind, you have to do it. Don't think that you're ever so good that that's an acceptable thing. And don't ever be so deprived that if a thought of good comes into your heart, you have to do it because you should be doing it already. Right? 
It says, you see, therefore, how it is good to follow the messenger of righteousness. If, therefore, you shall follow him and submit to his works, you shall live unto Elohim. And as many as shall submit to his work shall live also unto Elohim. All right, and then we go on with the one from the community rule we had read last week. And here is the one from the Epistle of Barnabas, which again is almost identical, almost word for word identical to the um, what you can find in the Apostolic Constitutions for a witness for those things. But the whole point in all of these writings is to help identify the works and ways of our Creator, of our Father above through His Mashiach, Yahuwah, Yahushua. And the contrast of those is the works of the enemy, the thoughts and the, the inclinations of the adversary of our inner beings and what he puts into the minds and thoughts of men that he wants us to act out, which is pretty much everything that's contrary to truth and love. So thank you all for your time. You have a wonderful Shabbat. We will see you again next time.